there, I'm Rex King. Welcome back to another episode of From the Archive. Today we're talking about Tom Jones. Tom Jones is directed by Tony Richardson and is based off a novel by Harry Fielding of the same name. It was produced by Woodfall Films, who actually had some trouble with finances as their usual partner, Brian Stinton Films, was a little hesitant because the film was going to be in color and the proposed production was going to be very costly. Luckily, United Artists stepped in to pick up the cost. Another issue the film faced was the fact that it was shot entirely on location in the English countryside and had a lot of weather issues that it had to overcome. That wasn't the only issue, however, as Hugh Griffith, uh, one of the actors in the film, uh, who was known as a heavy drinker, actually fell off his horse and his horse fell on him uh, in a certain scene because he was very drunk. Uh, weirdly enough, that actually made it into the film, however. Uh, the film was luckily released in 1963 and was a huge success both financially and critically. It was so much a success financially that Albert Finney, the star of the film, who also had 10% of the um, profits, became an overnight millionaire. Critics loved it so much that it was nominated for 10 Oscars. It won four of them. One for Best Score, one for Best Screenplay, Best Director, and Best uh, Picture of 1963. Nowadays, critics are a little bit split. Some really love the film. Some feel like it hasn't aged all that well. What do I think? Well, let's talk about it. So Tom Jones is the... Well, story of Tom Jones, played by Albert Finney. He's a low-born uh, bastard who was kind of taken in by Squire Allsworthy, played by George Devine, and raised alongside uh, Squire Allsworthy's nephew, uh, Bliffith, played by um, David Warner. And pretty much they're complete polar opposites. Tom is a... Uh, country hick for the most part. He's good-natured and kind, gets himself into a lot of trouble with the fairer sex, if you catch my drift, and doesn't really uh, subscribe to the piety of the uh, countryside that they're in. Meanwhile, Bliffel is pretty much the exact opposite. Refined, um, upper class, and uh, pious as all hell. This causes conflict between the two, which gets even more complicated when Sophie Weston uh, comes back to town, and her and Tom kind of start up a relationship, uh, which is complicated because of Tom's continuous debauchery, and uh, the fact that Sophie's parents want to marry her to Bliffle. And basically the rest of the film is Tom's misadventures throughout the English countryside. So this is an interesting Best Picture winner in the fact that I don't think there's been a Best Picture winner that's been nearly as zany and as over the top as this. The story sounds very simplistic, but it is completely bonkers. The stuff that this guy gets into is absolutely nuts uh he he goes from one scene where he's uh fallen for someone gets in trouble for doing that another scene where he falls again for another mysterious lady gets in trouble again then he joins the army then he almost gets executed i mean this guy goes through a lot in this film and it is really really funny most of the time i really enjoyed this film i had a lot of laughs i could not stop smiling throughout most of the runtime. I thought this film was absolutely nuts, and I loved it. Um, this has to do with the character of Tom Jones primarily, as though this guy is flawed as all heck, I do really enjoy this guy. I, I, I understand where he's coming from, and I get that. Uh, I really want to root for this guy because he is a good guy. He, he generally tries to do right by everyone he encounters. He just gets himself into trouble because every woman in this film wants to bang him for some reason. And thus that gets him into trouble. I do have a nitpick in the fact that because of the fact that he continuously has um, 
sex with like every girl in this film. Um, I feel like Sophie wouldn't have forgiven him at the end of the film, but not only does she instantly forgive him, it's kind of feels very rushed and forced. Uh, especially with what we've been given about Sobey's character for almost the runtime, because she continuously gets sad that he's doing these things with these other women, and, uh, but at the end, when it's revealed, oh, he's not actually just a random bastard, he's actually the, um, bastard son of, uh, Squire Allsworthy's, uh, sister, therefore technically Squire Allsworthy's nephew, um, he all of a sudden gets forgiven for everything that he's done, and that feels a little weird. Uh, that being said, the other characters are fine. Um, they're a little one-note at times, especially Bliffith as an antagonist. He's not really developed all that well. He's just the opposite of Tom. And I, honestly, that's fine because Tom is the main focus of this film, and he's a really well-done character. The performances are top-notch. This made Albert Finney's career, and it's not hard to see why he was nominated for an Oscar for this role, because he plays Tom wonderfully. His comedic wit is on point, and uh, when he's playing Tom to be sympathetic, Tom is sympathetic. It, it really showed how much depth Albert Finney could bring to a character like this. Uh, the other actors are all doing a great job. Suzuni, Susanna Yar York as Sophie Weston was amazing. Um, every, all the other actors do a fantastic job uh, and also bring some quirky personalities to their respective characters. And I really enjoyed what we got on the screen. Visually, this film is a little interesting as most of the film was shot via handheld camera. And that gives it a more rougher feel than most films in color at the time that were using Steadicam. And I kind of liked it. I really liked the awkward angles and some of the more speedy uh, film edits. As I feel like um, it added a more interesting feel and more uh, dynamic feel to the film. As it's much more of a simpler uh Film focusing on character dynamics. I don't feel like we needed a big steady cam, um, and sometimes the shaky cam here actually works, especially with the hunt scene um, that's in the movie, as that comes off as chaotic and over the top, as it very well should. Then you have music, which was done by John Addison, and he did a fantastic job. I can see why he won Best Score of the Year because, yeah, it's a really good score. And you can definitely see uh, w that it was definitely copied for future films, as a lot of films definitely took uh, reference from what he did in this film and incorporated it into their movie. And that's really the understatement of Tom Jones, the effect it had on British film history, as at this point a lot of British films were more gritty, more uh, realistic, and this film went for a more lighter, more fantastical tone, and went completely ridiculous and over the top and that really worked for it and it was one of like I want to say three films those three films being this uh Dr. No and uh A Hard Day's Night um that uh really like changed the British cinema uh as we know it and I I, I gotta say, I really enjoyed this film, um, and I enjoyed, can see why um, people really floated towards this style of film as opposed to the nitty gritty stuff at the time. Um, so, final verdict here, uh, is this film a buy, a stream, or an avoid altogether? Well, you can stream this film on uh, Max, Canopy, and like every Criterion Collection film, the Criterion Collection channel. As for is it a buy, let's talk about the special features. The special features here are uh, director's cut, uh, interviews with um, Tony Richardson's wife, Vanessa Redgrave, um, Albert Finney, and uh, John Addison, uh, also the uh, cinematographer of the film. Um, there's also a special feature about what really inspired Tom Jones and what impact it had on British cinema as a whole. 
Uh, like every Criterion Collection Blu-ray, I really think that this film is a buy. There's a lot here and it tells you a lot about the film industry and how the film came to be. Not only that, but this movie's really good. I really enjoyed it. I couldn't stop laughing. Now, I know there are people who aren't going to find this funny, but it did have such a huge impact on British cinema that if you're collecting movies, this needs to be in your collection, whether you like it or not, because it's had such a huge impact on British cinema as a whole. Anyway, that's my opinion on Tom Jones. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell to be notified when I post new content. And next week, we're going to look at something a little bit different than Tom Jones. Dread. See you then.